Good morning everyone. Okay, um, welcome to today's session, Fundament of Plagiarism. Um, Plagiarism, the Dancing Shadows. All right, today we have the author of Plagiarism, the Dancing Shadows as our speaker. Uh, we are honored today to have her here and talk about uh, the book itself and um, plagiarism in general. So a bit about our author. Dr. Arniza Ghazali is an academic staff at the Division of Biosource Technology in School of Industrial Technology, University of Science Malaysia. Um, she was groomed in, an, in a unique uh, education system from 1989 to 1993 and the survival skill set has since then been applied to complete her postgraduate studies in varying fields. Her Master of Science is on the synthesis of semiconductor, while her PhD is on biomass processing. The initial steepest learning curve has largely assisted her learning journey. She is keen to share an evergreen impact on study costs, especially the emphasis on originality and the guide to avoiding plagiarism. Um, therefore, um let's welcome Dr. Aniza Ghazali, uh, our speaker for today. Doctor. Alright. Uh, terima kasih. Thank you, Miss Umur Sada from uh, ADEC University Malaya. <coughs> for I feel very honored to be to have the opportunity to attend this sharing session today. Yep. Uh, let me know if I can't be heard. Uh, for now, it's okay. Okay, okay. So, uh, yeah, good day from me. Salam sejahtera to all uh, uh, honorable participants, professors, Professor Madia, doctors, and there are, I understand that there are also students attending this session today. Yeah? So, without further ado, Today we are going to look at and understand the responsibility to address plagiarism, a form of academic misconduct. In line with or to realize quality education, which has long been addressed. It, one of those who addressed what this issue was the long-serving Vice-Chancellor of University Malaya, yeah, Professor Diraja Unku Aziz, who asserted that we need to have some universities that pursue quality. So, so quality has been in mind for a long time. One of the ways is to eradicate plagiarism and realize honesty in academic pursuit. For that, between 10 to 2 p.m. today, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., uh, sorry, 10 a.m. to I think about 12 noon today, we are going to look at the fundamentals of plagiarism in a book entitled Plagiaries, The Dancing Shadows. Okay, today is June 6, 2021. I am Aniza Ghazali, a lecturer in University Science Malaysia. I'm more of a lifelong learner, observing, trying to understand the situation in the education sector. So the, our organizer for this program today is ADEC. Thank you, ADEC, for making this a reality. So further ado, by the end of this session, we should have an idea of the checklist of criteria of plagiarism and take note of some high profile cases happening around the world. We will also uh, embed some diagnosis steps to identify the severity of plagiarism or absence of plagiarism amongst students and also embedded and emphasized in the book is actually the systematic way of uh, 
performing the resource intensive writing process. So I'll try to as much uh, as possible cover what's not in the book because the book can be accessed online uh, to, to, to uh, as revision and to learn this systematic way, which is quite technical, uh, of making simply the resource intensive writing process. This is the book. As the cover shows, uh, the main focus is plagiarism. So who are plagiarists? The plural of plagiarism, yeah? the person who commit plagiarism or the act of copying, presenting ideas as the person's own idea without proper attribution. The core thing here is false claim yet yeah? because they the other proper attribution. So for that, plagiarism, the deed called plagiarizing is actually an academic misconduct. So jika tidak ada soalan, kita proceed ya. I understand that wow, there is one uh, participant from overseas, postdoc, so I shall pursue this with uh, in English ya. All right, the outline of today's session will be like this. We are going to look at the types. We are going to uh, understand the meaning and the scope by looking at the types of plagiarism. Next is I'm going to share some out of the box uh, uh, strategies adopted around the world to eradicate plagiarism. The price for recognizing plagiarism. Uh, with the hope that with the embedded uh, 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 embedded types, strategies, and how to identify. Uh, we hopefully uh, will be able to guide students not to plagiarize, right? It's important also to consider the existing pandemic, COVID-19, and I hope this session will be interactive. Not covered will be the way to trick plagiarism software because a whole lot of uh, YouTube videos are available on the way to uh, change sentences uh, to make sure that it's not plagiarism from the eyes of softwares like authenticate, turn it in. Okay, today the emphasis is more on inculcating integrity. So let's listen what a professor from United States has to say about integrity versus university. Oh, macam tak boleh play pula. Okay, I hope you can hear Prof. Eric. So the whole idea is university, value of a university is depend on its ability to uh, keep integrity among students and amongst its whole cohort. Right? So next is What we are not going today, not going to do today is about uh, uh, how to trick the software because tricking itself is cheating. Although it is just a student or man and machine cheat, but the ultimate uh, outcome would be uh, to the examiner and to the student and it would weave into IT. So we are not training students to cheat 
there are serious plagiarism aspects for the more that a uh, software cannot capture. However, we need to need in authenticate, for instance, yeah, as quality control measure. And also, some researchers worldwide study plagiarism uh, and perform quantitative analysis of the extent of severity of plagiarism by using in. It's something that we can learn from. All right, the seriousness of integrity and the needs to eradicate cheating is visited by this recognized United States authors. He said, yeah, he's Jonathan. Jonathan said that a student who plagiarizes refused to be educated. There shouldn't be room in my classroom for that kind of student. Indeed, the person is not a student at all. So the idea of learning, the idea of registering as student is to go through the process, is to have integrity, is to pass without dishonesty. Having said that, let us look at the types of plagiarism as precautions measures to us, yeah, for us to take extra precaution and also to ultimately be able to guide students. So I have actually coded in the book plagiarism type 1 to 13. Right, and so we are going to be consistent with the coding here. Let's look at type 1, idea plagiarism. But idea plagiarism normally involves primary sources of information, namely proposal, letter, emails, verbal expression. And these are types or examples of first of primary sources of information, the ones that you get fresh, the one generated face to face, the one not publicized in the Internet. All right. So these are prone to plagiarism because it is also safe for plagiarists to take ideas from these sources. Examples are lyrics, songs, music notes, the whispers, artwork. And this raise one important question here. Uh, is basic trust no longer applicable in the academia or in our everyday lives? Or is it just not seriously feeding? On that regards, His Royal Highness Sultan Nazrin Shah, uh, in one of the ceremonies celebrating graduates of University Sultan Aslan Shah Pera, he pointed out that plagiarism is an academic crime because the act dishonor uh, intellectuals and knowledge and it should be addressed firmly. In response to that, Dr. Patricia Martinez shared her horrifying experience discovering that her published work was plagiarized. So her action was to blacklist the plagiarist. First, it is something I experienced. Editor mishandling our manuscript. Manuscript is rejected, but the contents are taken, beautified, and published somewhere. So my paper appeared in a different area. Okay, in city, I, I, I tried to send paper to Education Journal to describe uh, why this connection happens between learning and practice in nano safety. However, the, pub, the, 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 the ideas appear in a nano safety journal written by safety experts. So we hope to stop this from proliferating in the academia because this should be a sector that educate and it's not a criminal sector. Okay, if you are someone who believe that uh, novel, movies are uh, actually a uh, record of real happenings in life. So this is one example of movie that exposes what happened uh, to a teammate, okay, a skillful teammate, 
she was actually poisoned and the deeds was revealed as they die and this is the story of life after death okay let's take a look The wealthy spirit is actually the plagiarist. So he, he didn't have the skill that uh, the skinny, impoverished guy had. He, but the guy was killed. So the wealthy guy looked like a great figure, creative shadows, however. Next is verbatim plagiarism or Xerox 2.0. This happens back, in, back uh, since our school years, I believe. If a student is caught submitting or copying assignment of a friend, he or she will be called copycat. Okay, it is an embarrassment. A good remark uh, so that such an action, uh, intentional copying of friend's work, stop. Okay, so copycats of verbatim plagiarism or Xerox 2.0 is actually the intentional copying of assignment, raw or skillfully, and submit as own work. So what happens there is uh, no attribution. Okay, it is also called, so pada zaman digital ni, in this digital era, that is called control C, control V. So you can try to do control C and control V and see what happens. Okay, it is a word for word plagiarism. Okay, no quotation mark, no attribution, and so it an, it is an acute dishonesty. Among university students, this can happen by copying of text from a book, from a website. However, if it is also a practice among seniors, then the question is raised again, where is basic honesty? We see criminal mind around, okay, needing reboot, and this needs to be done as soon as possible. Otherwise, the next layer of leaders will not be able to lead because the Malay proverb says, seperti ketam mengajar anaknya berjalan lurus, no way, Ketam itu dapat, anak ni dapat berjalan lurus because the mother itself cannot jalan lurus. Okay, this is an example, yeah. Uh, uh, take it as an example and take it also as a way to diagnose severity of plagiarism among students. So, we are now looking at work as an examiner, okay. So, uh, the strategy that I use this semester is I have my e-book. Okay, I share my e-book with students. So this e-book contains lots of references. Okay, uh, but it is a one reference for student, one stop reference for student to cut down their work stress and strain with online learning and assignments. So this book contains basically an answer for a uh, compile in another ebook. So each student is given a different question to work on and come up with a poster. So in this case, the student took the question and put it on her poster. Yeah? MCQ question coupled with descriptive question and the student is supposed to formulate the poster. So the first prerequisite is, the first step is to get the answer correct and then put them together in a poster. Okay, let's see. Yeah? The contents of the book starts with yeah, page 66 of chapter 4. Uh, definition of resource, pre-processing and that's pre-treatment and the types of pre-treatment. The question only once, how to save commodities like citrus oils and uh, and eucalyptus oil, I think. Okay, eucalyptus oil ni, kalau dekat uh, kedai-kedai kita di Malaysia, minyak cak kapak. Okay, actually, uh, eucalyptus tree can produce that eucalyptus oil, but if we process without taking this into consideration, all this commodity goes to waste. Okay, well, how, what, what, what did the student do? Okay, 
this is the definition. The student took it out, right? The ways, yeah? Definition and the techniques. Okay, the student took the definition verbatim. Instead of answering question and only include fractional distillation, student was unable to assimilate. So, this candidate took the whole of this and put on the poster. It's quite sad. However, it's for us to learn how severe it is. So, the takeaway is we need to do something and start weaving values and integrities among students. Okay, next is improper reference. Amongst my students, this is common. Copying statements directly from a reference plus the references used by the source. Okay, so the way to detect is we will see, examiners will see inconsistency in referencing format. Okay, the way next to prove that is talk to the student, interview and see if the technical question behind it can be answered. Okay, why wrong? Why is this a dishonesty? Yeah, this is the reason. Yeah, when we have a page of references to introduce the references we use, it's not just use. It is the references I have read and cited. That's what it means. So cheating comes around when you list down, when you include references that you did not even read. Did not even access, did not even download and compile, did not even refer to. And furthermore, in text citation means I have read, evaluated, analyzed, and agree with the idea, agree with the meaning, like so. Alright, let us watch how this. Okay, it is a uh, by Ison. So Ison wrote, and the reader found something relevant here. We cannot see the video. Omu, can you help? Um, is the video not playing at all? No, just uh, we are on the slide jumper point, that's all that we can see. The rest is history. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, since when? From the start? Huh? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, but it's jumper point. We don't see any video, we can't hear anything. It's just stuck there. Yeah. Oh, video okay. demo thing on that so slide. <laughs> For me, oh, it's yeah, fine. <clears throat> I can For see. me, it's fine. I think it's uh, something related to the connection. Okay, so yeah, you so are correct. I got it. Yeah. Okay, kita apa apa. The idea is the student read. Okay, kita tengok balik satu satu. Sekarang apa tak? What are we uh, supposed to see? Okay, he is supposed to see the process of mapping. Okay, reader found important point in a journal. Copy the part that is relevant and then paste on a uh, word document. PowerPoint. So it looks. Oh, eh, hilang lah. Saya punya slide mana pergi? Okay, uh, sebentar saya oh. try. Uh, must be technical problem kerja eh. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, saya minta maaf ya. Saya ingatkan semua boleh boleh nampak. Dari sini memang ada signal lagging sikit. Rabu normally memang line heavy. So video tadi tu berkenaan dengan how the process of copying happens. Especially bila kita handle PDF kan. PDF relevant, we, we found relevant point, excited, kemudian copy. Pinjam dulu, pinjam dulu, pinjam dulu, copy, letak dekat dokumen kita. Okay, but then, remember, uh, remember to rephrase, remember to paraphrase, formulate or derive an idea and 
uh, beautify the sentence and remember to quote the reference not the references cited by the paper we read i really hope the video can get through okay still boleh nampak ya oh dr alwani dari luar um ke dari dalam ya uh, we are using the account attached to um it's supposed to be an insider account Right, okay. Oh, saya minta maaf ya, this is a technical problem. Hmm, at the moment. Dr. Arniza, yeah, um, yeah. can I know what page are you on just now? Uh, okay. Uh, because I'm trying to cut the PowerPoint to half so that I can upload it faster. Uh, okay, let me check ya. Kita uh, um, page 13. 13, okay. Uh, give me a minute. <laughs> oh, few. Uh, well, that maybe you can just, you know, uh, go on first. Well, I'll try to upload the PowerPoint again. Okay, uh, how, how about uh, me share screen? Boleh ke tak boleh? Uh, but uh, your internet is not stable, correct? You want to share? Because if you are sharing screen, I can't share your PowerPoint. Okay. Would you want to okay, share your screen to. first? Okay, if I, if, I, if I can, let's see. Yep. If I share screen, okay, what, what, what? What happens here? Yeah? Can, can can others see my screen? Okay, if I play, okay, oh. on. D Doctor okay, Arniza, we there? can't see your screen yet. Oh, okay, okay. Can anyone else see? Okay, yes. Okay. All right. We okay. Uh, they can see your screen, so you can just play it, I think. Yeah, okay, okay. Once again, yeah. Any process of copying. Dr. Arniza. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, I think I lost you for a while. We can hear you. Yeah. Uh, how about okay. the video? All right, uh, Dr. Aniza, can you, can you unshare your screen? Uh, when you share, did you click computer audio? Uh, I, I, I didn't do anything to that. All right, computer okay. Audio. Can, can you unshare first? Unshare the icon beside uh, mic? Yeah. Done. Right, okay. When you share, can you just click include computer sound? Okay, uh, uh, where is that computer sound? Uh, besides share content? Besides share content is leave? Uh, no, 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 no. I mean, when you click share content. Right. All right. There's a wording share content and include computer sound. Sound, right. Okay, all right. right okay. okay. Okay, so now right. I the slide, okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um okay. Nampak tak nampak? Play? All right, we can see it now. Yeah, okay, okay. So, tadi, di mana okay. ya? Tadi, uh, Dr. Uh, Arniza, hold on. Can you minimize the box on the down below? Okay. Yes, that one. Okay. Done, right, yeah? thank you. Yeah, okay, okay. So, this is the, um, this is the, this is the act of copying, okay? This is an example. <laughs> So, 
Oh, it looks like it's just me. Uh, uh, eh, kenapa dia tak boleh pergi ni? Ya? Okay, sorry. So, the copy document, the copy, uh, the copy text looks something like this, okay? With an S missing. Together with the references, right? Okay, this is raw verbatim copy paste. Okay, in a document, if we forget to paraphrase, then it would look like this together with the references. Okay, this is cheating. If we did not refer to Ackerman, did not refer to the rest of the papers, okay, up to Pasal 2004, then it is cheating. The correct way of doing that is to rephrase, okay, put Ison, the paper we read, the author was Ison, 2000. 14, first step, blah, 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 blah. And this affect the set trigger or promote plagiarism. Oh, refine further. Make it shorter and sweeter. And the reference list goes only I song. Without, without Sheila, without the rest. Because we only refer to I song. Unless we make reference to this, we read, understood, and agree with the contents here and use their ideas then they yeah, unless we do that we can reference here list here if we haven't then just list i saw okay so having said that this is uh, the next plagiarism apa tadi tu ya tadi tu improper referencing but this is improper referencing this is copy wrongs or mishandling of copyrighted materials again there were many e-books, okay, that I've made ready for students. This question happened to do, to require details from another e-book. So what the student did was to copy the idea, the initial diagram, the idea that formulated from reading many, many, many references on silica recycling in the environment. Okay, the idea of rest in peace were taken. Uh, although, uh, and the reference say, the citation says illustrated by her, okay? While in actual fact, the idea came from this. And by right, when I check uh, with the bookstore manager, uh, this student actually has the book on uh, silica. So, this original work should have been referenced there and this should have also cited in text citation Ghazali and Ghazali 2021. Okay, this is a scholar but she has to be coached further to understand academic integrity. Okay, this happens to me. This diagram was drawn back in 2006 and included as my PhD thesis. Many authors use it around IPTA, especially those in the field of biomass, okay, they describe how silica is deposited in plant structure, okay. So instead of putting here sumber, ghazali, or in English, courtesy of, okay, or reproduce from, okay, uh, normally authors just present this, okay, and it's quite disheartening. And this is a kind of plagiarism that's not detected by turning in or authenticate. So that's why we are recommended examiners recommended to do manual check another diagram yeah and this is micrograph uh, the technique of acquiring this image is quite expensive i don't understand why student has to change uh, take this photo and instead of describing silica the way it was describing my thesis originally was claimed to be silver nanoparticles in plants Okay, this shouldn't happen and the student shouldn't pass. However, we don't know who the student is because the image was uploaded to Pinterest. That's where we found the false claim. All right, paraphrasing is technical. We need English, Bahasa Malaysia or Bahasa Arab, whatever language or instructional medium that you use to avoid paraphrase plagiarism. Paraphrasing is not correctly done by replacing words with the synonym. Copying the storyline is plagiarism. So rephrasing every sentence as therefore is not right. So poor paraphrasing, 
also a form of paraphrase plagiarism is presenting a derailed meaning. And whether it's A or B, it reflects students' inability to formulate or derive new idea, which is normally the objective of uh, assignments, written assignments, and that, that should help students develop high order thinking skill level six, create. Okay, and the form of paraphrase plagiarism is called mosaic plagiarism. And this is an example of mosaic pattern from where the name is derived here. Yeah? So it is an intentional plagiarism and it also reflects lack of scale and the way to diagnose is we can color the sentence fragments or fragments of words in a, in a sentence and give this some color scheme in accordance to the references. And as a, after coloring, you, we will find this kind of color patches in a written work. Okay, that's where it's from where the term mosaic plagiarism uh, pops up here. Yeah? The, uh, the, the, the overall pattern of plagiarism. To me, this is an evolving type of plagiarism because 30 years back when I was in ESL class, mosaic plagiarism was not introduced. We were taught how to paraphrase, how to rephrase, okay, and there was no such thing as wrong remarks, clear wrong remarks, warning from fragments. So this is something new. We need to make sure besides observing for storyline, arguments not to be the same, we have to really, really, really formulate. So if the idea of writing, formulating idea can be adhered to, we can actually develop a great students and so realize the quality education. All right, so far, I hope we are still together. Okay, choose a profile describing you, A, B, or C. Okay, sekiranya semua masih uh, all right, masih okay, kita tengok the next plagiarism, and that is translation plagiarism. Uh, with digitization, Google Translate, this can be hidden by first translating to language one, say Spain, Spanish, yeah, and then convert to German language, and then convert to Bahasa Malaysia. So at the end, you know, the storyline remains the same, but the phrases may have changed. The meanings might also, uh, also slightly derail. As an examiner, we can observe for flow, the argument, the conclusion, to check if student has really done their job translating without plagiarizing. <clears throat> so the must do here is actually idea again, formulate and derive ideas and then present it in your own words, in our own words, in students own words. Okay, to me this is also uh, an involved definition of type of plagiarism because this was not an issue uh, introduced to us 30 years back. But today, kita ada university, uh, Bahasa Pengantar Bahasa Malaysia. We have courses with uh, instructional media being Arabic. Uh, so with this variety, this new uh, or translation plagiarism image. Okay, this is accidental plagiarism. I have uh, described in class that if you take a verbatim substatement in my ebook, uh, you're supposed to place quotation marks. So instead of placing quotation marks uh, for this statement, this particular candidate place it uh, at the surname and at the end of this uh, in-text citation. Okay, this is forgiven some way. Next similar idea, yes. Sometimes we have a uh, shared belief or we that we the authors writing published papers. If we call it great minds, things like. However, to be honest with referencing, it is good to acknowledge the published ideas. And in the notes, in our notes, state clearly we agree with the idea yeah, or give a three take, but remember to rephrase, remember to acknowledge its 
prior existence. One way to do it is like this, yeah? not the best way, but one uh, one of the ways is <coughs> uh, uh, Shrifka has given, has published a, 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 an idea agreed by many, many commentators, including us, okay, you, me. Okay? So it is put like this, as stated by many commentators, including Shrifka, the whole idea is actually to acknowledge Shrifka. That's the most recent uh, uh, reference that uh, accessible online. So a good write-up makes intelligent use of both the primary and the secondary references. So if you want to learn more about the types of references, well, what are primary sources of information, what are the secondary references, these can be found in chapter two, yeah, intentionality. Page 25 is this example, but not, not the best example. I believe you can do a lot better in replacing this. Okay, next is a form of plagiarism. Sometimes accidental, sometimes, I don't know, sometimes it come as an instruction. Sometimes we attend conference and the instruction is make 30% changes so that it can become a journal. Okay, let's be careful. Step back, sit back, and that is rethink here. Yeah? Duplicate publication is actually an intentional plagiarism. It happens among students when students submit the same assignment to two different instructors. Most students actually ask permission and they ask them to this particular instructor. Okay, actually that's duplicate submission and that's not permissible, it's not good for students. Okay, however, uh, Budi bicara kedua-dua instructor lah, kedua-dua examiner, ya. Yeah? Next is citation. Uh, duplicate can be, can, can happen when self-citation is not practiced. At one point, there were trainers who taught me that self 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 citation is not necessary okay however the the clear definition of duplicate publication type of plagiarism is we need to cite our work published work especially but moderately not excessively in this regard yeah on this note your university of oxford uh, uh, published that this is also called self plagiarism or auto plagiarism yep it's forbidden here self citation is a must but not excessive zero one point xerox one point oh essentially an old practice uh some of this is under copyright law but some references reputable references actually list this as part of plagiarism <coughs> Yeah, simply photocopy, photocopy of textbook, bind, lawa-lawa, and it becomes uh, a book, a reference book. Okay, this differ from university, from university. I have heard of policy saying as long as photocopying is made for learning, educational purpose, it's okay. However, there are universities that are strict about this. For example, universities in Australia, we need to have budget to buy books, fresh books, original books, yeah, buy only originals and luckily JPA has sponsored uh, a gift that budget to all of its students. It's actually an intentional type of authorship, intentional plagiarism, sorry, okay, among students, at smaller scale, this ha normally happens in group work, okay? So we can co also call it group work plagiarism because of skewed claim of contribution, which Oxford Uni call it collusion. Okay, at professional level, amongst the, at the academics, this can also happen. Yeah, it can be serious because we claim substance collaboration, but what happens 
is no contribution in the writing process and therefore the collaboration becomes just form collaboration. This happens in general writing, uh, conferences, manuscript, and in the era with KPI setting, uh, publication in ISI, Scopus, you know, this becomes a big pressure to us. Okay, this happens normally through social networking, okay, then mutual understanding to include each other's name in a number of publication. It's like an investment and then a passive income that comes together with it. It volumizes researchers CV, okay, mm, but we have to pause and sit back and think about this here. Yeah? Okay, this is objectional. <clears throat> ghost authorship and ghost authorship is also receiving tremendous attention worldwide. It is an intentional outright plagiarism, unacceptable behavior because authors, a different author is paid but remain anonymous. The guilty person is the plagiarist. Plagiarist is the person who chose who opted for the ghost authorship service because the academic qualification, the doctor, master or bachelor's degree is conferred to the plagiarist and this makes him or her shadows and is dancing, appealing, well regarded for, for instance, yeah, for graduating on time. Today, there are rewards, special rewards for graduating on time. So that's why the title was Plagiarist, the Dancing Shadow, yeah? that they are not real. So unless we stop it, it may be a legacy in our institution from approving to one's habit to a community's habit, acceptable protocol, culture and false authorship, therefore is a disease that needs to be stopped and let's do it from our humble ends. Okay, these are misconducts not listed under plagiarism. Forgetting to give acknowledgement to assistance. Okay. okay, and next, falsification of data that normally leads to retraction. However, to detect falsification is not easy. It normally requires the, the, the lead principal investigator to go back to the lab, critically analyze all samples and procedures, interview the students or researchers manning or running the experiments, but finding out the error Early of the year, Nicola Smith, an Australian researcher uh, who had actually published her work in Nature's Journal, yeah, reputable journal. However, upon discovering some technical error, she decided to retract the paper. Well, this is a dignified move. Next, I'm not sure if this is plagiarism number 14. It's not said anywhere, but it is part of misconduct for sure. Um, misconduct that is so real. Okay, let's flash back here, yeah, back in 2011. Someone complained, uh, cried, mengamuk, yeah, parents and students mengamuk because one student after a UPSR paper claimed that my daddy is a hero. He got me the question even before the exam, exam dictation in other words, yeah, and the daddy does it, okay, where is value, yeah, so, but what the reality that the girl did not know is that daddy could be dragged to a serious disciplinary action, lost his job, end up in prison, and such actions, if not controlled, means that two transcripts cannot be compared, plagiarized work cannot be compared to original works. They are like durian and lime, satu masam, satu sensationally sedap. Okay? The actual learner who studied cover to cover may be denied admission to the university and cutting corners become an 
addiction here is contagious and it's addictive, especially when we have set that class mindset uh, and an opportunist at the same time. Right, so we have covered here yeah, 13 types of plagiarism. The serious ones, uh, intentional plagiarism are put with red borders. Xerox 2.0, verbatim plagiarism, yeah, copy paste, control C, control V, improper referencing, copy wrongs or mishandling of copyrights, paraphrase, technical, sometimes I have a gift sebab kita tak boleh expect student dengan muat to be able to do it. Wow, okay, kita perlu guide. Same goes with mosaic. We might be committing that plagiarism without realizing it. But translation, plagiarism is not forgivable, okay, accidental plagiarism, budi bicara, shared belief, okay, let's be honest, self plagiarize again, uh, it could be new knowledge juga sebab dulu kata jangan side, sekarang kata wajib side, okay, so 0 ini berbeza in practice according to country, according to university, we have to check the policy, okay, outright plagiarism, false authorship and false authorship. So having said that, kalau tak ada soalan, oh when I'm sharing my screen like this kan, saya tak boleh tengok chat box. So kalau ada soalan, just unmute ya. Otherwise, we proceed to understanding mengapa plagiarism berlaku, why plagiarism happens. Jadi, the script Normally, that plagiarist use upon being caught red-handed is normally, uh, normally, I was not trained. I didn't know. Okay, sometimes because of these set as reasons, examiners are backfired. Okay, next, this is also common. Desperate for time, pressured for time, unfamiliar with the field clear rules by the institution or no punishment or just about 100 uh, RM denda for copying or cheating. So student budget 1000 and can do 10 times. Students refusal to learn. Yeah, if we are strict about this, we will end up like Jonathan, yeah. It's no longer nice to be in the academia. We need to give up to, 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 to exit academia because of labels. Supervisor cerewet, fancy supervisor sih, and cumbersome. Things can be done easier by just you know get someone to write and graduate on time, and save the stress. Student could not handle feedback. Okay, it happened among my students yeah. Upon returning, upon getting feedback, students feel that okay, no, I'm going to submit my first draft and not doing correction. So during Viva is going to be here walk. Right. There are things within our control. Punishment. Yeah, we can uh, get the university legal office to declare or make it strict so that it becomes so that the So, but if students are willing to do correction, willing to upper to, uh, willing to, hey, my screen, uh, my screen is missing. Kenapa ni berlaku ya? Katalah saya kecikkan tu. Okay, so, so now it's here ya. Yeah? Uh, if students are willing to do corrections, willing to learn, this actually requires resilience and they will build more resilience by the time they graduate. But oh, from my experience supervising master students, yeah, the best well transformed student was an Indonesian. A girl, yeah, girl student. Ta'at, very, very, very uh, ta'at, very resilient, correct, correct, learn, continue learning until she graduated. Okay, there is also something that we can Fix. Keep pressure for time. Or uh, it's all it's timely to redefine a. Eh, 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 being pictured as best of excellence is 
it's worrisome because we need to incorporate somewhere because the process is okay, approvable, then it's excellent. Otherwise, it's not. This honesty is not excellent. And next, there needs to be mechanism, yeah? System that lacks overload or workload balancing mechanism. Okay, then staff promotion criteria. Saya tak tahulah bila um, bila kita akan letakkan student transformation hmm. as KPI, yeah? it would be interesting to have that. However, sekiranya tidak berubah, the system will automatically train student to cheat. Okay, the reasons that will be in the plagiarism script would be like, uh, I don't know. Okay, and also writing is a resource intensive process. Reading, analyzing, formulating. Okay, but normally plagiarism is driven by lack of knowledge, a literacy skill, yeah? Fear of reality. Oh, if it's small, so you use something big to look big, to look great, yeah? Okay, these are some professional academy issues. A supervisor not reading students' work, did not give feedback. So, as an examiner, we are, it is advisable, yeah, that we keep evidence of giving feedback to student, interaction, instruction. Biasanya student tak mau buat, bukan tak terima instruction, tak sanggup buat. Because doing it means you have to sacrifice your TV time. You have to sacrifice your shopping time. Kalau dulu, sekarang MCO. Okay, but but we have to also understand, yeah, uh, tidak semua student enjoy uh, conducive prasarana infrastructure to do their work. Yes, I pernah lihat video on oral exam. So, video webcam on and I saw stacks of mattresses in a room as students background and the student informed me that oh, we need to be on time because uh, at, after, right after this exam her siblings would come home and she will not have privacy to study. So, it's, it's, it's a pity but there are, these are circumstances that we need consider. Okay, let's listen to who's this guy? Cadangan <coughs> amalan ada perbezaan yang banyak. Kita boleh buat cadangan tetapi kalau tak tahu macam mana nak melaksana dia tak akan jadi student semua di tangan kita dalam kawalan kita within our radar so kita lah we should never expect I think okay we should never expect satu rules datang top down from kementerian I'm not sure when that will happen okay so before kita lihat kepada uh, apa? Doing it, doing it tadi ya. Kita dah lihat dah sikit-sikit tadi from the types. So now let us look at the consequences and worldwide. Okay, max reduction is one of the consequences for planning. Originality as one feature, one parameter ya. If the rubric is able to describe originality and who give the right weightage of mark automatically students who plagiarize the marks will be reduced okay so the rubric can capture next okay however no matter how good the rubric is when students score low marks if question and and the marks given by the actual examiner are uh, uh, put aside he discarded then students in pass so we can see both of the ability that he or she does not have in this regards too it is good for universities departments to consider allowing examiner to report straight to legal office so that the examiner can be protected because there are a literature reviewing that uh, the head of departments, professors refusing to take cases uh, to address the case uh, at 
university legal level. In KTU, Kaunas Technology University Lithuania, the president of the student union feels that ignorance is no excuse and is not going to free students from the responsibility of authentic learning and not cheating yeah, from integrity. Okay, so there was rumors at one time, but Tolga, is the penalty real? Okay, one person responded. He's a member in the Senior Academic Integrity Counselor. So he responded that he once voted for the plagiarists to be expelled from the university. I think if I'm not mistaken, this is the case in UK University. So the lesson takeaway for us, student and staff is it's real. Today, top university in China, Tsinghua University, expelled plagiarists. The new statement that was published in 2019 goes like this. Under the latest version of disciplinary regulation, students who plagiarize, fabricate, falsify, hire ghostwriters of right for others in bachelor's master doctor dissertations will be expelled. Last time, previously, these students only receive demerits in okay, now expulsion. So we, we need to also learn from here that in order for a university to be great and to retain standard reputation untainted, we need to discard that. As for our country, 2018 study or survey done on 4,000 participants indicate that a shift in paradigm, yeah? the majority agree that plagiarists be Punish. Okay, again back to Lithuania. Yeah, Lithuania is unique. Or uh, Kaunas Technology University, they actually uh, assign students to police academic dishonesty. So when students are given the authority based on the agreement to practice code of academic ethics, okay, so they could preserve values by promoting in, uh, academic integrity. As a result. Dishonesty rates or index went down. Okay, the publication here shows that high ranking officers are not discriminated from the peraturan, from the regulation. Okay, index. Great. Okay. High profile cases. Now let us look at high profile cases. Yeah? This uh, move is mainly led by Professor Deborah. She wrote False Feathers, Springer Bookstore other. Yeah, ini, False Feathers, saya belum baca. Oh, it's quite expensive. He said, we fostered an environment in which major ethical problems have emerged with very few people willing to say or do something about it, yeah, plagiarism learning. Okay, she caught apa, yeah? Apa, Deborah caught politician plagiarism. Okay, ini born 1956, maknanya baby boomers becoming education minister, yeah? At that age, she was uh, brought to allegation of, her uh, thesis was revoked by the university upon proving systematic and deliberate false claim of intellectual achievements. Yep. So, Menteri, Menteri Pendidikan. Okay, also in Germany, Francisca, what did Francisca do? She was, she received plagiarism allegations in 2019. She decided to give up the doctor title, okay, that was um, given by University of Berlin in 2010. However, recently she was forced to resign. Next, Max Malunya, born 1977, 1970, politician. Nah. Nations about PhD revoked in 2011 by the university and 1,020 plagiarized passages. Oh my god from 30 references, yeah? two-thirds of the references was not listed in bibliography. Yeah? That is a clear dishonesty, which Germans objected. Okay, 
does not have any value when dishonesty is captured. That's what we can learn from here. Yeah, Gothenburg, May 2011, allegedly found deceiving and the deception was in, I think, in his PhD. So, revocation by the university. Yeah, Dr. Ray. Okay, so he left politics. Okay, this is Austrian only minister, charge of plagiarism of master and PhD thesis. So, resigned following the allegations. So, uh, this may indicate to us yeah, the questionable European university. However, if Debra's move to eradicate plagiarism become successful, then by now it should define a very uh, a find uh, define its direction to quality education yep yeah, for the world. Also, politician. This is Prime Minister of Slovak, born nineteen seventy three. In two thousand twenty, he was allegedly found. Uh, plagiarizing. Yep, the university studied his PhD thesis and he was forced to swap. He decided to swap uh, with Hegger. So Hegger becomes the prime minister. He became the his deputy. He sailed in the cabinet, in other words. Uh, more cases involving Slovak. Yep, speaker at parliament, Boris Kola. Okay, at first refused to, 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 to resign, but resigned anyway. Finally, same goes with Grawling. He resigned a few weeks back. They are following mishandling and both of them uh, were questioned for mishandling of COVID-19. So we can learn from here that in Germany, yeah, it's quite a trend to make, uh, not to make, yeah. we capture dishonesty through thesis, through academic qualification and that's the reason to, to, to and we can all, we should be able to also appreciate yeah, undesirable minority discarded dishonesty not allowed to drag because they are liability baggage and a way to us public figure to step down is by addressing the dishonesty in academic practices or academic crime and the steps are important because we need to stop misconduct from creeping into society. If we allow that to happen, if we tolerate, then the vicious cycle of human capital continues. So we should be there should be an agent called to weave values back into the social fabric because this is how the cycle goes here. Uh, back home, there's informal teaching. And yeah, we learn informally. Voluntary or from parents, some and grandma, you say with grandparents, yeah. Okay, next, kin kindy, primary school. A class becomes bigger as we step into secondary school. Uni. Kadang-kadang boleh tenggelam sebab ramai, but if normally, if you are above average, you're still there. Upon graduation, some of us exit the the education cycle yeah or cycle of human capital in the education sector however with by the state uh, the informal exit is we teach the next generation however some of us end up in school yeah if the process here is contaminated if this honesty is not given a halt or stop so the next generation will be contaminated yep. contamination continues at school level and people manning the the secondary school are also likely to be the source of contaminants and the contaminants continue at university level of course university being a big institution kita masih ada we can see screen out those people who uphold values Okay, so this is a retired a statement from a retired ghostwriter. Yeah? He used to provide services for ghostwriting, ghost authorship. So he's basically, he can read, he can write on any fields at all to fulfill market demand. So he said, of all fields, educators were the biggest 
cheaters. Okay, betul lah kot. Uh, hari ni the question, the, the quality is questionable, yeah. If I can skip that kan. Nah, setakat ni kalau tak ada apa persoalan, okay kita tengok okay, ini pula video ni pula. sedikit sebanyak berkenaan dengan uh, bagaimana kita nak handle uh, problem ini. Kita ada some idea? Ya, yeah, that's a keyword. Ya, yeah, idea kita ada idea dan kita ada lab untuk buat experiment. Kita ada student within our radar. Ya, yeah, Alhamdulillah. Plagiarism is something that we can tangani, we can handle, yeah. So this is okay. This is the uh, let me share yeah, from students. I how a formal education, a formal approach can be integrated to overcome plagiarism issue. Of the learning process. Contoh here, before students enter university, there are many institutions or colleges offering a uh, preparatory education. These are where pools of students from arts, science, law, social science, accounting, engineering, etc. are gathered. They took, they enrolled into general courses like ESL. Yeah, English as second language for instance. Untuk bidang, uh, bidang agama mungkin Arabic as second language mungkin. Um, okay, let me know if that's right. So, literacy skill would be trained. And next is communication skill. Bila kita kata communication, when we say communication, we refer to both written and verbal communication. So, in an ESL, English as Second Language Classroom, students are polished uh, for their reading comprehension skill. Yeah, we did that in school too, but is now the group is smaller, more focused, and the target is higher. So listening skill, you, uh, listening and speaking, you need it uh, when you, especially when you are not in the home country. Critical thinking is needed in writing, note taking to survive lecture, to maximize learning. Note taking is important. I have once uh, anal analyzed okay, amongst my students, in a batch of students, only 40% could take accurate notes, while 60% had new. So, perlulah ada intervention. Okay, as students here, the kinds of references that they can, they wish they could have. Sebab itulah datang idea Ibu, uh, e-learning portal pun ada, open learning pun ada, micro-credential contents pun ada already. They just need to maximize. Okay, it's, our, it's within our uh, locus of authority yeah, to make those references available to facilitate learning. Of course, these two skills are essential for writing, 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 yeah, writing. And according to one lecturer who has been handling uh, this ESL courses, yeah, actually plagiarism is introduced in research methods. Ya, saya ingat-ingat lupa, tapi saya ingat, tak ingat, sama ada project ataupun apa, but yeah, it's part of a project briefing and we were trained on plagiarism. Sama, if you register for IELTS, mesti ada component, at least the writing component, introduce or say something about plagiarism. Kalau tidak, to pass an international paper is impossible. Okay, in terms of effectiveness kan, however, dulu, kalau kita tengok, if, if we look at the pass rate, out of 200 students enrolling in such secretary education, 95% uh, passes is possible. Back then, 1989, for instance, yeah, for Australian year 11, year 12, yeah, a preparatory education that goes for 1.5 year duration, okay, 95% students got through fly overseas and transformation for English language from grade F to B, which is impressive. However, at bachelor's level, 
and the time pressure, those who uphold the of academic honesty went down to only 25%. Okay, I apologize if the figure is so rough and estimate, but I would like to share that under pressure, even you have you have you have known, you have been taught, you have uh, undergone the training, you may choose out of desperation to plagiarize. To fix it, yeah? It's good to realize, yeah, as students, uh, these are literacy skill. It can be assisted by librarian. Most universities have uh, great library infrastructure and well-trained librarians, but what is the assistance scope? Okay, information search, yes, librarian can help. However, the duty still mandated upon students are understand the references. You're not going to refer to a librarian to clarify meanings, right? We normally, if we don't clarify, supervisor, lecturers, or the author, him or herself are to be contacted for clarification. So you have to have those skills, those six skills, yeah, that you do in the ESL. Understanding the references, analyzing it, being able to put information together, yeah, thinking all the level six, hots, level six, derive new concept, interpret into discussion, these are all students and supervisor, examiner, facilitate the lecturers, educators facilitate. Uh, if you do too much, that's spoon feeding and not good for students resilience development. Okay, this is just process comparison here. Yeah? Zaman dulu, like last time, we uh, back in the 80s, yeah, we used that writer. And then came 186 IBM computer. Okay, so Type, 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 type with all the noises and use liquid paper to erase, yeah, sometimes rubber to erase. But since 1995 until today, information access is borderless, just a click away. Papers can be downloaded in less than 30 seconds, sometimes two seconds downloaded. Okay, online interlibrary loan is so super fast. Okay, provided you have the right keyword. So back to vocabulary, back to ESL classroom, right? Okay. Tetapi dulu, bagaimana orang zaman dulu Gen X awal-awal tu handle ya? Do I, I can see from the list yeah, some of you are engineering background. I'm sure you, if you were born in 1970s, late 60s, I'm sure you remember chemical abstract. It's one corner of the library, you have to sit on the floor, sometimes you have to queue. After one masale, leave that corner, then you go and sit there and look through the chemical abstract. Okay, if you're not willing to do that, it's a painstaking task, then the, the next, the other option is plagiarize. Okay, so library loan, one to two weeks, one paper, yeah. Uh, contact the librarian, okay, fill up form, and the system say, okay, you will get your paper in one to two weeks time. But normally, yeah, for, for, as we said in Australia, I need a paper from University of Melbourne. So, lepas lima hari, it was sent to my supervisor. My supervisor looked for me and handed me the paper. It was such a very, very unforgettable experience, yeah. So, library provided assistance scientific articles it's a big hub of references tetapi hari ini with ai digitalization everything is so easy dulu ini cara guna keyword ya look through chemical abstract Ket, kalau some uni ya handwritten not even typewritten masa saya dekat college es classes dulu handwritten okay those were the days lah you know, everything manually. Tulis, oh yeah, buang tulis mula. Hari ni, just uh, highlight, click, delete, okay, all gone, then you can rewrite. We do do lain. Okay, it's easy now. Okay, so with this ease uh, allowed by digitized 
digitalization ya digitalization it's our responsibility to uh, support students learning okay katakan they put our situation in a writing project okay tak semua masuk lab kan so the general project is to come up with a thesis okay after defining topic what happens i find that students need help okay so how to come up with a rough outline you need to show them that the first step is to come up with a rough outline because this is to guide student and keep them on track so how to do that okay. look at the topic and brainstorm meaning 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 to come up with if students are doing it alone then supervisor should come to rescue lah ya so the tips is uh belum take notes lagi uh okay 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 the important point here kan yang saya nak share ialah discussion with supervisor nampak light kan it has it, students need to be reminded to take this seriously because other case phd student fail because his failure to cite his supervisor's idea so the supervisor alleged uh, he was allegedly uh, the allegation of plagiarism here was put on him by the supervisor himself sebab id supervisor postulation made by the supervisor kita tak boleh overlook walaupun primary source of information ni is just from a short consultation let's take it seriously so the way to handle it, pesan pada student, yeah, remind student, besides taking good notes, record the time, the place, the time, the date, time, place, and make sure it is cited. Tak perlu list, tetapi cited. Yeah. So, first meeting, rough outline. Okay, katakan, yeah, katakan hari ni kita bincang tentang plagiarism and the useful tips to avoid it. Ini contoh example of outline ni. Yeah? The course, semua essay, semua essay ada introduction. The core content says ways to avoid plagiarism and therefore kalau ada jalan, ada outcome and conclusion. So students should have this in mind to keep them on track. So Brainstorm dulu ya, yeah? what is plagiarism? Okay, I will talk about what plagiarism is and the consequences. And next, uh, from my brainstorm, I find that uh, tricking software like turning in, authenticate, uh, is, yeah, is one of the ways to avoid plagiarism. However, writing ethically is a safer way. So you make postulations, you make projection. So I predict that the outcome is 2A. So I'm going to write on outcome 2A and outcome for implementing 2B. Okay, at this time, at this moment, at this stage, tak perlu worry about conclusion. Yeah. Rough outline should actively uh, uh, assist student, guide student to work on the detailed outline. Yeah? Is this an active process? Bukan satu proses yang student patut rasa lost, mengelamun, tak ada, tak, tak ada ruang. The writing process should be energetic. But we need to coach students on literature management. Okay, kalau student datang, saya share lah. Ada student yang memang borrow kita punya notes to learn how to make notes. Yeah, this, if you can see here, yeah, different things. The black. I think it's my views, the red or the author's view. Supaya nanti bila kita uh, menulis, we can cite accordingly. No limit to style, ya. Yeah? When it comes to note making, of course, letaklah references, coding, supaya mudah proses penulisan nanti. In color, yeah, date is important. Okay, so now it's time to come up with uh, deep, not so detailed, but the next step. Student be independent right now, should have more ideas, uh, do not need to be spoon fed right? Spoon fed right now because they dah baca, sudah buat literature survey. So, 
definition of plagiarism alone dah ada. Initial form apa? The present form apa? The dangers, the consequences. Okay, we have seen high profile cases. Uh, we, we did not see court cases tapi ada kan baru-baru ni masuk newspaper so we can cope that. Okay, failing and expulsion. Inability to cite primary source, yeah, supervisor's view is dangerous. Okay, so can describe that in the uh, in the essay. Sekarang baru uh, rough outline. So, the next step perlu interview, perlu baca lagi lah. It's not the end yet. Okay, how to avoid? Okay, the software. Talk about the software and where to get them, where to learn them. Ethical writing. Okay, basically we are doing this. We are doing brainstorming, we are doing outlining. We have look at the literature, literature management, yeah. Uh, referencing librarian boleh tolong concluding students uh, kena analyze kena formula advisor boleh tolong so outcome kita tak tahulah tapi kita boleh postulate pass with race or intellectual development apply skill set and develop resilience conclusion pun tak perlu be at this stage however please take note that gap gap structure ini tiap-tiap penulisan akan mempunyai struktur ini tiap-tiap paragraph katakan introduction, define the first keyword, the second keyword the problem statement objectives, and TC statement referring to the last sentence connecting to the uh, bigger body Ya, yeah, tiap-tiap paragraph tu ada topic sentence and details, hujah, hujah, hujah hujah, hujah, details, one, two, five and then Diikuti followed by subtle conclusion of the paragraph. However, linking to the next paragraph. Okay, take note ya. Di sinilah plagiarism bermula. Mana nak cari detail 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Shortcut, if students are pressed for time, copy, paste. And that's uh, tips untuk kita lah ya. That's where to detect plagiarism. Biasanya bujang. Yes, kiranya tak ada soalan. Basically, conclusion, revisit objectives lah and comment about this study. And this is also the place that reflects students' ability to put things all together and whether or not they understand the project. These are the three things that will actually prevent the decline of your brain once you pass 45. Number one, hyperoxygenation. At a minimum, three times a week, you should be hyperoxygenating your blood system, aka doing some form of brisk walk or exercise to create a hyperoxygen state. The second thing is learning. It's a use it or lose it scenario. If you're not learning, your brain literally starts to divert resources to other organs and other areas of your body in order to maintain stability and homeostasis. And so the more you engage in learning, the sharper your brain stays. And more importantly, the more plastic your brain becomes because you start connecting neurons that have never been connected before. Ya, yeah, ada syarat. Dengan syarat learning tu, kita ada plagiarism. Okay. Okay, so summary ya. Eh? Jika kita lihat uh, Bloom's uh, revised taxonomy, writing ni nampaknya involve this process ya. Yeah? Think, analyze, formulate, create, and that is thinking or the level six ataupun hoax. So students, if writing can be done ethically, with with honesty, without misconduct, without plagiarism, they can develop high order thinking skill. They are able to synthesize idea. The write up itself is creating an idea. Let me know if you disagree. So thinking happens at brainstorming stage. Are at rewriting, rephrasing, paraphrasing the formulation of idea and that normally comes with analytical reading. Tak ada analytical reading, tak boleh berlaku. Tetapi yang akan berlaku ialah plagiarism. Okay, next is to get these tips correct. If the uh, saying of the author is so powerful, Changing it would give uh, 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 make, would make the impact less. Okay, so we use quotation mark to 
take exactly the author's saying. However, uh, if capable, I uh, try, try to keep this to a minimum because normally we paraphrase. And the next stage of editing, yang ini boleh hantar service editing for correction of grammatical error. So having said that, the good of writing ni sebenarnya Fox pun dah sebut. Many, many, many references ya. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Untuk seorang Muslim, uh, the teaching of the rules ya, citation, being honest with uh, references, itu demonstrated in the narration of hadith. From this person to that person, that person say when this person was doing something, Rasulullah said, the Prophet said. Okay, that is actually a good example of honesty in citation. Okay, if the process is undergone by student here, yeah, willingly, full-heartedly, with soul, they develop emotional, spiritual, physical resilience yang diperlukan. Pembelajaran, process of getting degree is just the start of a small test in life. The bigger test in real life is requires more of us here. Yeah? So let me know if I've said wrongly. Oh, this is the old slide. Yes, ini dia dia. We need to say no to IPTA being ground zero to plagiarism pandemic and we need to participate, we need to play our role from our small ends here yeah? to transform students and start weaving values. When Kauna University Director, Kaunas Technology University in Lithuania, they set a very good example. Yep, back to values. We do not tolerate uh, plagiarism, dishonesty, attitude. And if it happens, it's going to be publicized and it's going to be shameful. Ini adalah video, uh, some values, yeah, the way to weave values in parenting uh set by our neighboring country the thailand okay can actually go to this link and watch this video bagaimana thai's parents coach their children um to be good okay of course back to that girl daddy yeah my dad's my dad is a hero he showed me the question even before the exam it's not some it's not a pride yeah it's not something to be proud of but it's something to be uh, to be set off is your father not setting good example. Dia jadi sekiranya kita tidak lead by example, it's going to be haywired. If at least anak-anak akan ada misconception of values. Dia tidak menghargai lagi honesty. Okay, in the case of pandemic lah, seperti kita tada, katakan tadi, we need to be considerate, but at the same time, universities in US and Canada, ya, yeah, uh, ada yang uh, uh, keenly chat, cheating that increases with online mode of learning. So, they strategize. Okay? So, one way of strategizing is one person, one assignment topic, macam poster tadi tu, okay, and I also... Uh, highly encourage the use of ebook because it helps us diagnose and define the severity of plagiarism happening among students or practice among students. Okay, back in US and UK, they have AI to monitor students and they are alerted. The faculty is alerted when students try to cheat. I'm not sure if UM has it. Um, untuk USM, kami guna Webex. And I noticed that uh, if I if the exam is uh, outside office hours, then no postmortem uh, can be done, no analysis. So in in other words, our Webex platform does not have a black box that could be used to. Uh, however, I have the I have the recording to my student because of a delayed exam. Then she chose to defer her exam by one day. So I was only watching her and I couldn't unmute her to, 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 to listen to the conversation she was having while having the online exam alone. Tapi, 
technical committee uh, way back start dapat bantu because it was outside office hours. Uh, bukan kita nak catch, but we need to educate, ya. Yeah? Educate the true meaning of education tu. Datang universiti bukan untuk dapat paper qualification and leave. No, that's not the idea of education. Okay, did so the sequence is like this, ya. Yeah? Uh, <clears throat> back in 2010, again yeah, the retired post writer do uh, estimate that 61% of undergraduates admitted of some kind of cheating and assignments in assignments. Yeah, hari ini kita this 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 so uh, 11 tahun kemudian these people may be amongst us. We are pressed with Alah, apalah kan Okay, dan kita lihat Sistem di plagiarism Tetapi in a way Indirectly menggalakkan <coughs> So the question For us as academic Shouldering, educating Tasks yeah? Have we made able the Human capital or Have we made more plagiarism Than before Untuk orang Islam Saya rasa ini sudah jelas, very very crystal clearly explained in the Quran. This is Ali Imran verse 188. Okay, uh, there used to be a very long video on interpretation of this verse by Brother Luqman Ali Khan. However, now there are only snippets. You need to go to this links and listen to minutes that you need to listen to yeah so plagiarism is actually strictly forbidden in islamic teaching maybe those of you who are christians yeah buddhists can share uh, uh your your views after this yeah okay so uh as an acknowledgement yeah Ini lama punya saya dah edit tadi dah sebenarnya Miss Umur Edek, uh, Dr. Arwani, Deputy Director of uh, CCD eh? uh, Azime was the one or uh, ex-cosmic who shared uh, copyright law of Malaysia Saya tak acknowledge library USM pun uh, Ini slide lama Okay Alright so before I go ya yeah, This is a dedication to all honourable participants Maaf kita kan ya. the link yeah? sebenarnya it's what the nation needs from us it's for the country sekian warahmatullahi wabarakatuh saya serahkan majlis kepada uh, saudari umum um, thank you Dr. Uh, Arniza uh, we have some question in the meeting chat did you manage to take a look at it Okay, uh, have I stopped sharing? Sorry? Uh, you can see my screen, ya? Yeah? Uh, okay, tak apa, Dr. Aniza boleh unshare the screen. Okay. Okay, you can go back to your teams and you can click the show conversation. Uh, for the participant, if you have any question, I suggest that you unmute your mic and 
um, just deliver your question so that Dr. Taniza can try her best to answer or give an opinion. Okay, let me read this question here yeah, by Chang Kian. Uh, he said, uh, may I ask a question from Tani in report? Some sentences expressed in a widely accepted way are regarded as copy. An example shown, okay, let us look at the example. It's too small, like Chang Kian. Uh, yes, doctor. <laughs> Can you see the picture? <laughs> Can you read it for me? Oh, uh, it's it's just uh, some uh, some sentence like uh, Faculty of Business and huh? Accountants, University of Malaya, uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. But all of these expressions are highlighted in the Tonity report. So I want to uh, ask uh, how to deal with this issue. Oh, can I change it uh, in another way to avoid the uh, this detection yeah okay we can actually uh this is handled by library in in back uh, in my university in the web uh, usm university yeah. science Malaysia, uh some of these tasks is handled by the librarian so to reduce unnecessary detection of similarity uh students are required to delete this acceptable uh clauses like faculty copyright page acknowledgement uh and i think reference list too if i'm not if i'm not mistaken okay so, so yeah delete oh so we can ask her help from our university's library to delete it uh, you, you need to find out from um library yeah? can can the okay Okay. Libraries can turn it in and yeah, who should be doing the deleting? You or the person running turn it in? Okay, okay. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, thank you, Chen Okay, any more questions from the floor? Um, do we have any more questions from the participants? Or maybe you would like to give some feedback on the session today? Uh, okay, uh, Dr. Aniza, I guess there's none for now. Um, I will share my screen to show the feedback form. I, I guess you can wrap up the session. Is that okay? Yeah, okay, okay. So, I rasa uh, I have wrapped up already with the last slide here yeah, on honesty that you do. Um, it's a challenge for us today, but it's something that we can uh, do, especially uh, when we look at the move here, yeah, global move combating plagiarism. Malaysia should be part of it, and it will happen if every one of us play. Uh, our role, yeah, uh, about that book, yeah, book can be accessed here. Specific, uh, specific link leading to that book, uh, I cannot remember, yeah, that, that the bookstore link is this. It's called scholastic101.com. Perhaps you can share the link with me uh, so I can share with them later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all right. Thank you, Miss Umu, and thank you to all of the participants here. Dr. Anissa, uh -huh. uh, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, supposing like, um, you know, plagiarism ha has been detected like um, in PhD thesis, for example. Mm -hmm. So um, would this, like, I mean, what are the consequences? Is there standard kind of guideline uh, among universities or even in UM itself? What, what, what? What's the consequences? Do we have guidelines on that? On like integrity? Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe ADEC can answer. <laughs> yeah, ADEC. I think the response should be from ADEC. But, but maybe you have your views as well on the guidelines on the consequences and all that. Yeah, from my reading, I think uh, worldwide, even uh, uh, okay, if we compare practices here, yeah, US, University, Australian University, New Zealand, uh, 
and even Canada, the practices vary from faculty to faculty. And sometimes the variation is from one professor to another. Sometimes teaching assistants are more strict than the professor of the subject. Okay, but uh, 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 I think in Brazil, Brazilian, Brazilian researchers suggest that we should give authority to the examiner who detect the plagiarism to report straight to legal office. Okay, in UM, the legal office may be called something else. Okay, say like unit integrity ke, saya, saya tak sempat nak study what it is called in UM. Tapi saya rasa pendekatan ni sangat baik. Yeah, the approach is very good, not only to the student, but also to the, to the, to the, to the examiner. Sebab, we need to protect our examiner lah. Okay, dia bukan, uh, menganiaya ataupun kejam terhadap student tetapi it is a process of educating and you can go to the full video of professor Eric Tau awal-awal tadi and listen to his idea of uh, educating student to a penalty a penalty ni sebenarnya banyak study menunjukkan it is a way to stop plagiarism effective most effective is Penalty. Kedua, kita mengajar di dalam kelas. Okay, as to what happened, severity tu biasanya legal office akan decide. Sometimes decision ada pada head of department. Head of department interview the student. Ini case tak silap saya, Queen's University kalau UK kan. Case di UK ni, teaching assistant address plagiarism issue. So the students were interviewed by the head of department. Dalam pertimbangan head of department, the student, uh, apa ya, the student was unaware or not sufficiently trained, and therefore given the chance to resubmit the assignment. Okay, that lenient. Okay, lebih lenient mungkin tutup mata lah, kasih pas. Sangat sangat lenient tak guna ni lenient ilam tak apa bagi je A. Sebab kalau tidak as an examiner kan, you bawa label tak, pang, tak akan dipanggil dah contohnya untuk menilai thesis okay, those are the consequences yang ditakuti juga kan but let's look, let, let's have a wider perspective here it's not for our pocket penalty uh, coaching students for plagiarism ni catching them, even catching them yeah, is to educate, is for the country kita tak mahu this ada triangular interaction dia ramai ekonomi setuju education ekonomi sesebuah negara dan rakyat well being tiga ni tak dapat dipisahkan so plagiarism ke apa-apa penalty for misconduct is for the country for the nation dia bukan nasib seseorang lecturer sangat we need to sacrifice lah tak apa unpopular as long as negara kita terselamat daripada this honesty yang akan menyelidak terus ke dalam social fabric of Malaysians. Okay, saya tidak ada one answer to that. Mungkin ADEC boleh respon ya. Biasanya dalam record UM, what was the most severe penalty and what was the case reported so far? <tuh> Yeah, maybe not, not sure on that. Maybe the I know the integrity section maybe was no better. Um, but uh, Dr. Anissa, can you share the link you mentioned about the full video of that professor? Can you share it with us? Uh, one, uh, saudari umum akan share tak itu? Okay, tak apa. You can take a camera of this. Yes, saya share lagi sekali. Yeah, I mean, just now you mentioned like that professor giving, I'm sure he gave a full lecture or something on the issue. Yeah, ni kot. Okay, ni ya. First slide tadi. Bukan first, sorry. Bukan first. Uh, okay, this slide. Okay, this is the link. Hmm, macam mana? Sekejap ya. Okay, can you see my screen? This is the link. Kalau kita nak Google kan, uh, pergi ke YouTube. Uh, Okay, dia Dia sebut pun Tapi sebenarnya The person who upload Nama dia Robin Mac something <laughs> Saya tak ingat, sorry uh, This is the YouTube 
uh, address it. Okay, doctor. Thank you. Okay, welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for your patience, yeah. Okay, I hand over to Ada, yeah. Okay, yeah. is there anything else? Any more questions? All right, if there's no question, we end today's session here. Please do not forget to fill up the feedback form. We appreciate your feedback um, to improve our future training program. So with that, thank you everyone. Have a great day. Assalamualaikum.